What's going on guys? National Master James Canty III here and today we have Tactics in the Hyper Accelerated Dragon. I am an avid player of it. I love playing the Hyper Accelerated Dragon and today I played a game against a National Master 2389 on Leech and my rating at the time was 2475 I think. So uh, here we go. Let's get right into it guys. I'll show you guys some tactics in today's opening so e4 c5 knight f3 g6 hyper accelerated dragon move order we always choose this way so we can avoid certain lines and uh, not get hit with the yugoslav and we can hold this d pawn and play d5 if they try to play a yugoslav on us so after d4 we capture of course and knight takes and knight to c6 this is very standard stuff i've been studying and i just recently very very recently got some super new theory on the hyper accelerated dragon so it helped me in some different positions and also to help you guys as well bishop g7 is a move order that they choose and it is something that can be done but the problem is you do face a different kind of meroxy bind and if you're not familiar with the plans and ideas you will get crushed very very badly or slowly in this bind type fashion if you start with the bishop g7 move order and not know what to do but it is very possible to do so so after knight to c6 i like choosing this move order after bishop e3 i could again go bishop g7 but that does allow c4 to happen so i actually like knight to f6 and that's the that's the move i chose here because it kind of forces him to play knight to c3 and not c4 because that just hangs upon and f3 is kind of weird because d5 just happens i'm already breaking in the center and i'm having a great game immediately out of the opening so knight to c3 is just the standard stuff so now we're, we're probably going to go classical is what i'm thinking here and classical goes like this bishop g7 bishop to c4 the usual move is actually going to be bishop to b3 to get this bishop just off of this uh file here and not be a loose piece loose pieces lose games and what that means is he's undefended when you have an undefended piece there's problems and this piece is undefended so rook c8 could definitely come with tempo later on even knight a5 in some cases or a6 followed by b5 the bishop is just kind of like a sitting duck sometimes let's 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 continue if i castle and white castles there's knight takes c4, which is actually covered in the how to play the hyper accelerated dragon video in this playlist. Make sure you check that out if you are a player of the hyper accelerated or you're looking to learn. Knight takes c4 and then knight takes in d5. So knight takes and the knight takes in d5 and we get our piece back and we're actually more than a little bit equal here. We're just slightly preferred. So um, with that being said, of course, we know usually bishop b3 is the move here. Even uh, Bobby Fischer played it, of course, in the Yugoslav type uh, setups with f4, queen d2, castling queen side, and then playing bishop c4 and bishop b3 and not before. Now, the problem here sometimes in the Sicilians, guys, is after something like castles, people try to mix Sicilians. So if you are a hyper accelerated dragon player, make sure you know this trick right here after f3 that is not a move you cannot mix sicilians and if you're trying to play bishop to c4 and f3 with a yugoslav attack because queen d2 and castles queen side you're going to run into some trouble if you are prepared with black and here it is can you guys find a move black to move here take a few seconds to see if you can find the move here for black The move here is actually queen to b6. It causes white so many problems here. Immediately, I'm already uh, threatening the b2 pawn, and it has something to do with this bishop on c4. How is queen b6 connected to the bishop on c4? Many things can happen. I'll just show you a quick knight a4, right? Hit the queen, not a move. Queen to b4, check, and capturing the bishop on the next move. You are in some trouble. Now, watch and learn, guys, because chess is a lot about give and take because this game got a little wild, and I'll show you a line that actually white missed in this opening. So I played queen to b6, and he thought for a while. But the problem here is what if he goes bishop to b3 now? The regular move, like we wanted to do anyway, bishop c4, bishop b3, standard Sicilian stuff. But the problem here is we made a threat to the d4 knight. And accelerated or hyper-accelerated dragon players, if this is you, you want to know this right now. You usually have three pieces attacking this knight not two pieces and we say this because this bishop is indirectly hitting it so what you do is knight takes e4 after knight takes e4 usually pawn or knight takes after bishop takes knight then we trade everything down here we're up a pawn in an easy end game and we're just feeling fine we're feeling fine here it's black so um we have we're, and we have that clear pawn so 
Uh, that is not fun. After queen to b6, he actually chose this move, which I've literally never, ever saw. I think I saw it one time in this new theory that I've been studying, but I was like, I don't remember. I just saw it one time. When you see something one time, especially in chess, most times you're not going to remember it unless you have a photographic memory. Now, uh, if you don't and you have to see things multiple times, then uh, this one here, I was like, I don't remember, but I know knight to knight. This is not a move. This shouldn't be right. So I sat here for a minute, and I was thinking about queen c5 for a while. Because I was like, what do I do here? Should I play queen c5? And I also thought maybe a6. So what do you guys think here? Before I tell you the move, which one is better? Which one would you choose? Queen to c5 or a6? Now here we go, guys. If you chose a6... You are correct, actually. That's the engine's recommendation, and this was my first mind. And a lot of times in chess, I say this a lot to my students, you should try to go with your first mind. A lot of times, man, if you ever, you ever, you know, been studying or you've uh, been doing a, a multiple choice test in school or something similar, and your first choice was like, right. You was like, this is my first choice, and then you just switch it for whatever reason, and uh, you come back to figure out that your first choice was correct. A6 was my first choice. A lot of times leaning on that does help you in chess too. Queen C5 was the secondary. But the reason why I didn't like A6 is because knight F knight F5. And after knight F5, I only calculated queen A5 check. And then after queen A5 check, there's bishop to B4, bishop to D2. And then after bishop d2, I can go queen b6 or queen back to d8, honestly. And I think the engine played queen b6 for a repeat of moves, but at, at queen to d8. And now I'm threatening both of these knights. Like, both of these knights are being attacked. So if he takes this bishop here, then I have takes, and I'm actually threatening both of these pieces at the same time. So I actually win some material. So a6 was the way to play. But I actually chose queen c5, just thinking that this was a little bit better. And after queen to c5, my idea was just, you know, keeping this um, here, even queen b4 checks and trying to escape if I need to, or running away this way to queen h5, and even a6 at this point too as well. So a6 was just a way to go, and now we know for future reference. So after queen c5, he plays queen to d3, showing that he does not know what's going on in this position. He just played queen to d3, and fortunately for me, this was a very bad move. Can you guys find a move I play here with black? What would you play? And actually, it didn't. I didn't see it instantly. I did not see it instantly. It took me a few things here because you got to notice, guys, when you see clusters of pieces like this, there is a lot going on. There is a lot going on. So, like, what do you actually do? Now, if you said 95, you are 100% correct. I'm actually threatening to take his queen with check. So any discoveries that he may try, just fail immediately tonight takes d3 with check. And he's immediately losing already. So no fun there. And I'm also threatening this bishop twice now with the queen. So at this point, I was like, this is already over. This is not what white wanted out of the opening. So black score is a big win there. He plays queen to a3. And now, guys, what would you play here with the black pieces? Here we go. If you say queen takes c4, this is what I did in the game. And immediately I was like, am I in trouble? And actually queen takes c4 was the move I chose. I think the engine line was queen takes a3. It is. And I'm still winning. This is the engine's line. Queen takes, of course, taking with the pawn loses a piece immediately due to knight takes c4 here. So they have to take with the knight. Next move, and it's, it's pretty equal if you can see this engine up here. It's a uh, minus 0.86 after captures is basically equal at this point. But this is not, I mean, yeah, I'm fine as black and this is not what white wanted, but I figured I was winning. And it, the winning move was a6. So of course, playing queen, queen c5 was not the winning move. a6 was the winning move, which we know for future reference, but just finishing the game here. Um, queen takes a3 is not what I played. I thought I was able to get away with queen takes c4. And I am, I am, but I actually didn't see the engine's recommendation immediately. I probably would have found it after calculation. But the move here, b3, my queen is absolutely trapped here. My queen is trapped right now. So you, I have nowhere to put the queen. No safe square. And this is kind of scary. And I saw this. After I was like, I captured it. It's funny how you see moves. You know, raise your hand, of course, right? For all the people out there that uh, have seen, um, see, you've seen the right move or you've seen what they can do after you make your move. And that's where we were here. I was like, wait, he can play b3. And I was like, oh, what do I even do? He didn't play it. But if he would have played b3, the only way for me to get out is knight to d3 check. Now, I'm still doing very well here as black. If he moves the king, I have queen to b4. So my queen gets out. 
my queen's able to run away that's cool and if he just captures within i mean who would you rather be in his position like black's attacking here and i can get out now a6 is coming like his pieces look you know weird it looks kind of weird here you do have to be slightly careful with queen placement so you don't trap your queen of course but there are many tactics here that face uh black in this uh in this in this form now actually after queen takes c4 he actually instantly took on e7 and didn't even see b3 so i was like wow okay well now i get to go up to peace here and now it's just good techniques to finish this out so i played knight to c6 actually and this game isn't the easiest because it is a three minute game so it is uh, we are getting shorter on time as the time goes on here or as, as many moves as we make i play knight to c6 not only does it attack d4 it attacks the the queen as well and the rule is of course trade when you're up and not when you're down so he plays queen to d6 and gets out of the way. And I chose this nice move, knight to e8. Knight to e8, I just wanted to open the bishop line up, make sure if his queen goes somewhere, then we can capture on d4. I'm also threatening d6 as well. And I figure queen d5 would be the move. And what I forgot here, actually being here, you have to be very accurate because, of course, he's super strong too. Knight to b4, I was like, oh yeah, I'm threatening two pawns. But I'm really not actually threatening two pawns. I'm only really threatening one of them. This one's hanging. This one's not unless this knight's gone if this knight's gone so if i'm able to kick him somehow some way and then the knight moves away well then even now it's still not even hanging so because it's defended on c2 so actually it was kind of a slight miscalculation here based off of i thought i was able to take this one but still following the rule trade when you're up not when you're down knight to b4 he castles and it got a little weird it got extremely weird here a6 i mean i'm threatening the knight so you have to kick him i have a rule that you have to, when they cross the line they have to go so the knight is crossed the line this pawn's crossed too we need to get him out of here i should have just taken on d5 and just been easier this would have been an easier way to do it but after a6 he just goes back to c3 and now it's just tougher now he has a center pawn which i should have captured here and just uh, make a threat here and then follow up with a6 but of course, uh, we didn't play that. So a5 happens. I play a5 because I, I anticipated a3. Knight e6 is coming. So I back my knight up and he goes right back to the square. At this point, I'm like, okay, well, I just have to play a regular game of chess here now and develop the rest of my pieces and just convert this advantage before it gets ridiculous. So after d6, bishop g5. And after d6, I'm actually just trying to put my bishop on d7. He goes bishop g5 and says, well, if you're going to do that, I'm going to get an exchange and at least try to make this a little bit more equal. So I play f6. I think it was kind of like my only move. I didn't like knight f6 because he could take on d6. Maybe I can take on d5. Yeah, kind of weird. Kind of weird. So I played f6, made a threat. He, he went here and I played bishop d7. He did take the pawn on d6 here. Capturing, capturing, capturing. Rook f to e8. So still a lot of chess left here. This pawn is, of course, annoying. And again, we should have just captured this pawn, but we also should have played a6 in the opening. And this is why you learn from every single game that you play, whether it's a win, loss, or a draw. You need to figure out how can you be better the next time. And in this game, I should have just played a6 like I thought I should and would have played a better game. So after c4, rook a to c8, uh, threatening the c4 pawn, which now I was like, okay, I'm feeling a lot better here. This is going to be easier because now this pawn is definitely under fire and he has b3 that can be hit with a4 which he does go for b3, a4, king b2. And then I think, I know there were some inaccuracies here. So let's see what the engine likes here. The best move is f5, keeping up the pressure on a long diagonal. I actually captured on b3. He captured, and then I played bishop to f8. I wanted to get rid of this bishop and take over the c5 square as quickly as possible. And maybe even like play knight a4 and just try to, you know, get rid of these. Because these are getting annoying now. Now they're connected. And like this one is the past. So... There's some problems. So bishop takes, king takes, rook to e1. I play knight c5. And I think we're getting very low on time here, actually. Yeah, we are, actually. We're getting extremely low on time at this point. Knight a4, king to b4, knight to b2. Hoping for knight to d3 check after rook takes e1. So if something crazy like a4 or c5 or d6, I can take on e1 after he takes back knight to d3 check. He saw this, and I take with the bishop hoping for rookie one again for 96 he doesn't fall for it knight d3 check himself and now at this point it even says that we're equal it's minus 0.70 i'm up a piece but due to the inaccuracies it's now equal now of course it does take more chess here from both sides and good chess but it's uh it's, it's definitely an error definitely an error and it did cost us here in the game we still are the favorite here but man you can definitely play good here as white according to the engine so after b6 
He plays a knight to f4, gets out of the way. And at this point, it was kind of hard to figure out my pieces. I remember this. We both were in time trouble. Uh, very under a minute at this point, I believe. But this was very, very hard to do for with black here. And I was like, rook a8, he can run away. I can't threaten this anymore. This bishop's passive, but it is holding this. At least it's holding this pawn. This pawn can't easily queen. But, you know, how do I make progress was the question. It was very hard. So he plays knight. I play knight e4. He plays d6, bishop d7. At least c5 is open for me. Knight d5, knight c5, and he can take on b6, I think. But after knight b6, I have rook to c6, I think, and like knight a6. So I was trying to see what, what could happen here. We was also very low on time again, but he played g4. I check him. And then uh, king c3, maybe I have b5. Best move is rook b8. Okay. I play rook c6. He went knight e7. Rook, back to, rook to c5 to swing this way. Knight, uh, king d3, rook a5, knight d5. I take on a3. He took here, oh, king e4. Oh, actually, this was really cool. Watch this. I remember this. f5 takes. He brought the king close. And here we go. Knight b8. He moved the rook to h4. And then I played knight c6 check. And I was like, yo, I thought this was mate. I was so hyped. I was like, oh, man, this is mate. But he just flagged. He actually flagged right here. But it, it, it feels like his mate, he just has king f4 as the only move. But this is like, man, this, this was very, very difficult, and it was not an easy game um, towards the end here based off of uh, inaccuracies. And also through, through the opening, let's turn the engine off here. Now we know what to do. Of course, if you have watched the other Hyper Accelerated Dragon videos, you know that this is the move order we choose. And when they play f3, like we covered before in the how-to video for the Hyper Accelerated Dragon, we play queen b6, and honestly, this one is a new move. This one I didn't cover in the video. I remember that. So I was like, I don't remember what to do here. Not that I even got this many times ever. I've been playing this a long time, and knight c to b5 was definitely interesting. But the best move was the first mine here, a6. And he can't take, of course, this is loose pieces, lose games, guys. So if knight takes, queen takes e3, that's check. GG, just start a new game. It's over. So, you know, it's a lot of problems here. And if we move the knight, I mean, it depends on where you go. Queen takes b2. Like, this is gross. I mean, this was disgusting for for uh, white here. It's already losing. So knight c to b5 is not a move. And that's probably why I didn't see it ever until, like, today being my first day ever seeing it. Because it's never played, right? So this was today's uh, video, guys, in tactics in the Hyper Accelerated Dragon. Let's just uh, keep going here to show you guys the game one more time. Takes here, and again, uh, future reference, a6 if you ever face this position, guys. I chose queen c5, went down a whole nother route. This will never happen again because uh, we will play a6, but um, this was the game. And inaccuracies cost us here, especially when you're playing at higher levels and you're playing stronger players. They will uh, they will uh, capitalize on, you in, on your inaccuracies. So you want to be a little bit more accurate, of course. Now, of course, more time on the clock, things change. But this is uh, one of the training games that I did today. This is the Hyper Accelerated Dragon, guys. Make sure you check out the playlist. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here and you like this uh, video. And uh, like and share this video as well, guys. Let me know how you liked it in the comments and if uh, this helped you. I'll see you guys on the next video.